Hello, everybody. Hi. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So this is great. Everything looks like we are up and running. Welcome to both the beginning of Elevate 2020 and also welcome to Own Your Intuition, which for those of you who are just joining us for this first part, which because of everything going on in the world, we decided to make freely available to everyone. Welcome to you and thank you for being here. And to those of you who are here for the full program, the full journey, welcome to this month of April where we're going to every single week take an elevating journey into a different aspect of our humanity and our soul. So if you are here because the title appealed to you and you have no idea who I am, my name is Lee and I have been working as an intuitive and as a channeler and as somebody who walks people through transformations for 16 years. But even though I'm 43 now, if you would have told me in my teens that I would be someone who would consider themselves intuitive and especially would be working as an intuitive, I would have thought you were crazy, which I think is one of the most common barriers that we come up against when it comes to intuition. We as a culture and as a society have been so programmed, particularly in Western culture, to divorce ourselves from our intuitive senses. And one of the things that I have really been heartened to see over the last couple of decades is how that's beginning to change. And the reason that Own Your Intuition is the title for this is because I really believe it's our job to do that. Other people can give us tips and teachings on intuition. There are going to be some things I will share tonight that I'm hoping will help you in your exploration of your intuition and your development of your own intuition, but it's really yours and you're going to own your intuition in the way that you own different aspects of your personality. Your intuition is as unique as you are. And a couple of people said to me uh, when I I took her on the road a one day workshop and met many of you out on the road with intuitive power. And I, I had a couple of people say, well, why, why are you doing a workshop on intuition if you yourself know that many of the people who already come to you are open to intuition, interested in intuition, many are intuitive teachers or healers. And I had the same question because the title was given to me and it's twofold. Number one, I think it's always good for us to check in on our relationship with our skills, in this case, intuition. But number two, it's where we're going in society. We're at this interesting period in our history where the rubber's, the rubber's meeting the road or whatever that famous phrase is that is escaping me right now, especially if you look at where we're at right now as a society. Never before has there been more questioning of what is the truth, what isn't the truth, where are we going as a society, a recognition that the old way of being cannot survive. So as we go through this next decade, one of the things that I've been hearing from my guides for years is that this particular decade we're in now, 2020 to 2030, is a huge transformation on the planet. And sometimes it's going to be tough and not easy. And I think we're in one of those phases right now. But you knowing how you feel the truth in you, for you, what is true for you is going to be key to how you navigate these times. And for me also, intuition has been an incredible force in not just my personal life, but in the work I do in the world and the way I create in the world. So I'm using intuition all of the time. I, I, I've found now that I can't operate through mind. I might have a really good idea about something in my mind, but if I try and move towards it and it isn't in tune with everything else going on and there isn't an intuitive sense around it, it doesn't work for me. So for tonight's broadcast, what we're going to do is a couple of different things. I'm going to walk you through a few of the kind of highlights that I would like to share with you that you might want to just pay attention to as you're working with and developing your intuition. I'm going to give you a couple of exercises to do that are very short, very quick, and they can be great daily practices for you to bring into your life to 
play with your intuition. I'm going to do a short channel from my guides, the Z's, and then I'm going to take some of your questions. And I know many of you are from all over the world, different time zones. So we had a lot of great questions emailed in, and I'm going to take some live too. So we have quite a bit to get through, so we should probably get on with it. So what I'm going to ask Noah to do is to help me out here with the slides. I have this little controller here that's showing me where our slides are, but um, he will be putting them up on the screen for you so that we can just use some visual to go through this. So you'll see right now on the screen, there is a quote that I love that I found from Albert Einstein. And he said, the intuitive mind is a sacred gift and the rational mind is a faithful servant. We have created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. And this is quite a few decades ago that Albert said this about our society. And right now we're in this breaking apart time in our society in this coming decade where the rise of intuition and the rise of intuition just being a part of the way that you operate in the world, not some mystical far off thing, not some thing that is ostracized, but actually people getting to reown that part of their power and their being is going to become more of the norm. So I want you to consider this. Learning about our intuition is an ongoing experiment. What I mean by this is your right brain mind, the way that we've been conditioned, will tend to think, oh, well, I'm not as intuitive as my friend Sally, the intuitive teacher. I'll go to her and I'll ask her, what does this mean, Sally? Or how does this work? And sure, it can be great to get Sally's wisdom or advice. But honestly, at the end of the day, your intuition is an ongoing experiment that you are having with yourself. So some people see things, some people feel things, some people hear things. For some of us, it's a combination of all of the above, but we're all quite unique. So see it as an ongoing experiment, meaning you don't have to panic about whether you're getting your intuition right or wrong. What you have to do is experiment with it and see what happens when you act on it. And we'll talk about when to act, how to act a little later, but please try and consider that your intuition is an ongoing experiment you're having with yourself. As you go through your life, your relationship to your intuition is going to change. It itself may change and grow. So don't think that you're trying to attain a thing outside you. You are simply learning to become more one with a power that exists in you, that you're learning to develop and learning to work with. Okay. Why does our intuition scare us then? Why is intuition so scary to us? It's because intuition points us to change. So I'll give you one of the things that I've often, I've often heard. I've, I've heard people say, oh my God, I had this intuition that this awful thing was going to happen. Oh my God, is that going to happen? And actually what, what then happens is they're in fear. They're in fear of this awful thing that's going to happen. And they're now having a relationship with fear. They're no longer intuitive. They may not have been intuitive in the first place because what they had this vision of may or may, not, may or may not prove to be true. But what we have to recognize is that the reason our intuition scares us is it's never reporting on the past. It's calling us forward. It's inviting us to do something new. So if your intuition right now is, oh my God, I need to go and train to be a singer and I'm terrified of singing, but I've got this intuition, I need to train to be a singer, there will be some fear around it because you becoming a singer will be you changing your identity and who you are. So it's okay that your intuition scares you. Why it scares you is it's calling you forward to change. And that's the bit that we start to pull away from. Okay. We'll talk more about how to work with that in just a few moments, but I want to kind of bring you into some of the tools that are more traditionally known that you can use. So for example, divination tools, tarot is a great tool, cards, card readings. I think often people get very scared of tarot decks or any kind of tool that they in the past have ascribed the power to. But the way I see any kind of tool is it's exactly that. It's a useful map that someone can use. So for example, if you go to a tarot card reader, I think the traditional 
way that people tend to experience tarot card readers is they go for this reading and they, they look at the cards and they see the power of the cards. But actually, there are three powers in that room. The cards, which are the map, the reader, who is tapping in intuitively and psychically, and you, who is allowing your auric field, your energetic information about you, your soul, your path to be read. So you're just as powerful in that room as the cards and the reader. It's why it's very hard to read for somebody who clamps up and is very close. It's fine. They don't need an intuitive reading. If they're that against it, they're just clamping up and they're closed and they pull away. It doesn't mean you can't read for those people because often you can, but it doesn't work as well as if someone comes into that room open to use the vessel of this tarot reader, these cards to bring something through. I had epiphanies when I used to go for tarot card readings for a lot of my late teens, but I didn't really understand that it wasn't just the information from the tarot cards. It was that I was in the frequency of a card reading. So if you're somebody who likes playing with cards, with friends, perhaps it's something you do for a living. If it's something that you're curious about and you want to develop your intuition, using some kind of card, whether it's tarot or some other deck or some other tool, can be a great way to start to practice allowing your intuition through. Because the truth is we don't really need any of the tools, but the tools might be the map that we first use. So I'm gonna show you one of the funniest experiences of my life around intuition, and perhaps Noah, you could uh, lose the slide for this moment, was with my dear friend, Nina, who's a soul sister and who I trust with my life, <laughs> but not this day. So I think we were about 21, 22, and we were, we were together for the afternoon and she showed me dowsing. So this is, I've, I completely, I should have a dowsing crystal really, but this is a crystal, an arc crystal that I wear around my neck. So it's way too heavy uh, for this use, but I'll, I'll show you. So she stood in front of me and she said, with dowsing, you can hold the crystal and if it moves clockwise, it's a yes answer. And if it moves anti-clockwise, it's a no. And she stood in front of me and she held this thing and she asked a question and it starts, I'll swing it. It started doing this really fast. And I thought, oh, for sure she is, she is making that happen. I completely didn't believe her. Then she handed it to me and uh, I asked a question. Uh, am I in Malibu right now? And it started moving. Now you can't see the top of my hand. So yes, I could be moving this myself, but I promise you I'm not. And if you've never doused before and you're new to this, this is a great thing to try because what happened for me was the tool of dousing and asking yes, no answers became a way of me tapping into the intuitive field. So what happened for me was before after about a week or two of using this, before the yes or the no would happen, I started to know which it was going to be. And then a few weeks later, I started to get more of a knowing about my question. It started to open me to the possibility of intuitive information. So dousing cards, they're all great tools. And they're really important because they open up an intuitive energy field. They also give other people permission so if you have a friend and you tell them you're going to put the cards down and they're going to choose the cards, it helps that friend be part of it. It helps that friend believe in what you're doing and it becomes a collaborative experience. So divination tools are great things to use and we shouldn't shy away from them. But I want to go back a second to something that I said about why does intuition scare us? What is it that happens for us when we have, say, a big vision. And let's go back to this idea that you've decided you want to be a Broadway singer. You're at home in quarantine and you suddenly have this vision and this epiphany that for the last 30 years you've wanted to sing, but you've never quite had the courage to go and do the training and go and do it. So Nora, if we could bring up the slides again for the visions and instincts, our starting points would be great. Thank you. So Visions and instincts are starting points. What happens to many of us is it's so exciting when you have this intuitive download or this intuitive vision 
you know, and then you tell all your friends about it. You're like, oh my God, I'm, I just had this vision and I'm going to be a Broadway singer in three years time. It's amazing. Yeah, you can be on the front row my first night. Oh my God. That bit's the fun bit. You know, that's kind of nice because your body lit up when you had the vision. It felt good. It felt like a move. But what happens next is how we bring it into action. And that's usually the part where we get scared the part where we recoil, and that's the part where we really have to know how to work with our intuition. So our visions and our intuitions are the revealing of a brand new map. And then who you are as a human, plus your creativity and your bravery is the road. So for example, what I mean by that is the map is I'm gonna be a Broadway singer. But now I'm going to have to take some actions. I'm going to have to go for some singing lessons, which kind of scares me because I'm a bit worried that the singing teacher is going to tell me there's no way I will ever be a Broadway singer. But again, it's not really the point. The vision is calling you forward. Whatever the outcome, this vision is asking you to move towards being a Broadway singer. And of course, you don't have to be a Broadway singer. You might be a singer in your local community. But there's something about the Broadway that the vision is big that makes you want to believe that there's something there for you to explore. It's going to have a deep impact on you as a person. It's going to expand you and make you grow. That's what intuition does. So your creativity and your bravery is the road. So let's say, you know, I don't have the financial resources to go and have singing lessons. Okay, well, my creativity would tell me, "Mm, I'm going to go online and see what free singing lessons or singing apps that are, I'm going to see, I'm going to get creative about how can I make this happen? Maybe I could go to a local choir and start singing there. How many different ways can I creatively start to bring singing and music into my life? Who can I talk to who is a musician? How can I start to bring, actually bring 3D examples of this closer to me and into my life? This is how you build the road the road to becoming that singer. And this is the bit that many of us will shy away from. We'll have the vision, we'll have the epiphany, it will feel great. We'll start to walk towards things and then it doesn't feel great. And here is why. This is what tends to happen for us when we start to initiate on our intuitions. You could say that your intuition is your intention. So my intuition, my intention is, yeah, I am going to try and be a Broadway singer, even though I've never had any training. I'm not sure I could do it, but that's my intention. What I'm then going to come up against as I start to walk towards it is my beliefs and also my willingness to take action. So this next slide shows you your intention plus your belief plus your action is where change happens. I've met many intuitives and visionaries who have told me about this amazing thing they're going to do in the world. And then I meet them years later and they're still telling the same story. And, you know, it's really important to have compassion for that because sometimes what's happening for people who are very traumatized, and I definitely have had experiences like this myself, is it's easier to live in the visionary realm. It's easier to live slightly out the body, slightly in possibility, slightly in possibility rather than in reality. Because anything that we try and make happen requires our body. So if we have trauma in the body and we see this beautiful vision of, oh, I could be a singer and that's going to help me escape this reality. The problem is to bring that into reality, I'm going to have to face my existing reality too. So many people don't want to come down into their body and try and make it happen. And I have complete empathy for that. But If you understand what happens when you start to walk into an intuition, if you understand that process a little bit more, it it becomes a bit more of a science experiment and you get to understand, oh, I see what's going on here. I'm coming up against my existing beliefs. So you'll see on the slide we have our intention is our goal or our desired end result. That's in the future. So our goal is to be a Broadway singer. Now we meet all of our beliefs about whether or not we can have this goal. So that is everything we have previously known, experienced, and been educated into believing. So maybe I was told I was tone deaf as a kid. Um, You know, my dad was like, well, you're tone deaf. You're never going to be a singer. Someone else said, oh, you've got terrible posture. So I'm like, well, I can't walk on stage as a Broadway singer. 
all of that stuff's going to come up in my inner psyche, in my emotional body, and I'm going to have to face it. I'm going to have to be willing to work through it, walk through it, release it as I start to go through this training, as I start to go to these classes, as I start to immerse myself in walking towards this world. Because you see, the Broadway singer bit is not the important bit. The journey is the important part of this. It's everything it's going to invite me to grow through and expand. So the actions I then need to take are the action steps I take toward my intention. And that's what I can do in the now. So my intention is the future. I want to be a Broadway singer. I'm now going to come up against my past. Everything I believed historically about whether or not I can become this. But in the now, despite my fears, despite my misgivings, I can keep walking towards my action. You know, I was with someone recently. Thank you, Noah, for that slide. Um, I was with someone recently and they were talking to me about... um, feeling uncomfortable um, about their work and they were feeling uncomfortable about getting on camera and they said to me, they said, oh, you're always so comfortable. I said, not at all. I said, I look comfortable um, because I I have a certain comfortability in my work at this point. I've been doing it for 16 years. I said, but if I'm not uncomfortable, at least some of the time in my work, I'm, I'm no longer growing. I'm no longer stretching, which means I'm not serving the people I'm serving, I'm not serving my own growth. So I think we have this mythic idea that that vision that we first have, which can feel quite delightful when we're just looking at it, it's like watching a soothing movie. It's like, oh, wow. And then I was a Broadway singer and then everyone clapped and it just looked fantastic. That's a vision. And that vision is great. It asks us to move forward, but it also invites our body to move into this growth process, this shift process. So don't deceive yourself around the idea that it's, it's going to be easy or it's going to be comfortable. Quite the opposite. I think our intuition is there to help give us a light at the end of the tunnel when it's asking us to move into something bigger. And I know at a time like this on the planet, boy, oh boy, we are in such a shift right now. Many of you watching this broadcast, you will have been for the last decade or so, you'll, you'll have been on your path. You'll have been activating yourself. You'll have been taking action but there will be a whole other portion of you on this broadcast who will feel quite new to this feeling of fire inside and I need to live in a bigger way. I need to speak my truth in a bigger way. I need to be here in a bigger way. So whenever you are practicing any of that, whether it's saying a truth to one of your parents, one of your friends, a colleague, and you're nervous to say it, but you know you need to say it and you've thought it through, you know, you've gone... This might be the easiest way to say it. This is the kindest way I could say it. And I'll just try one sentence and see how that goes. Then when you act on it, you're going to create huge change when you take action on your intuition. So it is scary for us. And we shouldn't think that it isn't going to bring a certain amount of growth. But it's always worth where we get to. Okay. So our next slide is intuition creates the new. So I want you to consider something because we're very pattern-based. We're very habit-based creatures as human beings. We, you know, we all like security and safety. It, it's kind of a default. Now, sure, there might be some of you watching going, I'm the opposite. I've never known security or safety in my life. I'm the wild card. I, li- I like thriving on adrenaline. So maybe for you, it's the, the edge might be to sit yourself in, in more comfort and more stillness. But for most people, on the planet, it's still very much the case that safety and security are kind of dangled in front of us as like the golden carrot. So when we work with our intuition, we're surrendering to a much bigger universe than our small minds might know. Our soul has a really big plan for us and it wants us to grow. And by the way, the big plan does not mean Broadway singer, because for most people on the planet, being a Broadway singer would have no meaning whatsoever. The big plan for our soul is always more presence, more experience, more connection to life, more service, a deepening in our mission. Doesn't mean everybody's going to experience their life that way. But for most of you who are willing to open to intuition, those of us that open to the fact that we're quite small, 
we as human, we as single individual human beings, we're quite a small part of a vast tapestry and we're all connected to it all of the time. When we work with our intuition, we're actually creating the new. It's why creativity is so intuitive. So the next slide I have for you is through our habits, we repeat and strengthen the old. Through our instincts, we create and invite the new. Change is traditionally scary for us. We both want it and we're scared of it. But the reason you'll feel alive when you're following your intuition is because you're inviting new energy in. It's not really a place of comfortability. And it doesn't have to be a place of distress either. It can be a place of great excitement. It depends how you're feeling that day, how big your goal is. But there will be a crackle of aliveness inside you that is the barometer of, oh, okay, I know, I'm, I know I'm alive. I know my intuition is working here because this is moving through me. So through our habits, we repeat and strengthen the old. So we can do the same old, same old for years if we want, but eventually the universe is going to push us out of that rut. Or through our instincts, we can create and invite the new in small ways and in big ways. So the thing that people have often asked me is they said, well, how do I know I'm going to get it right? I'm like, well, it depends what your perspective on right is, because then you're assuming that your destiny is already fixed and that there is a correct answer that your intuition wants you to find or seek. And in my experience and in my years of channeling, it doesn't work like that at all. Things will get changed as you go into them. So the other thing I want you to consider is intuition is like a GPS it will reroute you along the road. So you have to keep listening to it and adjusting as you go. And what I mean by this is you can never get it wrong. Like I've met some people who've gone, oh God, I, I should have listened to my intuition. And I've had that too. I've had those moments where I'm like, oh, I didn't listen. But you know what it's taught me? When I have then had that experience again, because this last time I didn't quite listen to my intuition as hard as I could have, or I wasn't quite ready to fully believe my intuition because I'm still in that experiment phase. The next time that feeling shows up in my body because I'm tracking it, because I'm remembering it, because I'm remembering the feelings and paying attention. I'm like, oh no, last time I was in this situation with the person like this, I needed to say no and I said yes and then I regretted it. So you will get opportunities constantly to reroute. So you can't miss your opportunity. I, I firmly believe that you can't miss, you know, often I think this idea we have been sold of soulmates, which trust me, I, I had that soulmate belief for many, many years in my teens and in my twenties. And the Z's, my guides have said, there are many opportunities for you and you will get lined up with the next one if one moves and disappears. And sure, there are certain people that are really important for us to connect with, but you can't miss your opportunity. So you can't go wrong with intuition, but you do have to keep leaning into it, experimenting with it and paying attention. Make mental or physical notes of what happens in certain circumstances so that like a scientist, you can go back and assess what happened. So everything in our life, including timelines, can change. And this feeds directly into what I'm saying. So if right now, let's say uh, I have three timelines. One of them is tomorrow I can have this really amazing heart opening experience. Uh, the other one is tomorrow I can just have a fairly neutral day. And the other one is tomorrow I can perhaps have some tough news in the morning. Well, all of that's going to depend on two things. It's going to depend on what in my world is moving and how other people and their lives are moving in my world. And it's also going to depend on how and where I show up. If tomorrow I'm not super open for whatever reason, I'm processing something, I'm still recovering from something, that lovely heart opening moment might not, might not happen for me, but it can happen the next day. So the reason I say everything, including timelines can change is I've seen some people beat themselves up over the fact that they had a psychic message or a vision or an intuition two years ago, and it's just not working. They're trying everything. They're pushing hard. They're, 
you know, trying to buy the building that they can't buy, that they saw this vision in. And this is where we have to have a, a gentle grip on 3D reality when it comes to bringing intuitive visions into reality. Because if we're fighting hard to try and make something happen, we're probably not paying attention to the timeline that day. And we're probably not paying attention to what's possible. And this brings up another point, which is how do we know when to act and how do we know when to wait? I hear this a lot. And again, this is a calibration thing, meaning the more you play with your intuition and track it and notice how it's things are feeling in your body with certain people, with certain things, the, the better you get at knowing what to do. So I always say, is the body and your 3D world ready? And I've written here, Lee scale, fear or terror. So <laughs> this, is my, um, this is my scale. Noah, you can keep the slide there, actually. I realize it might be helpful for people to see it. If I'm scared of something that my intuition asks me to do, and it's just the fear that I recognize, the part of me that feels uncomfortable, the part of me that feels a little bit out of my comfort zone, then I know I need to try and walk towards it. If I'm terrified of something that my intuition or a vision presents me with, if I'm terrified as I start to walk towards something that initially was fear and suddenly is, is, is big terror, that means my body is not quite ready. My body, is, it's too big. It's okay that I had that vision, but I need to love this body because I need this body on my side. This body is what walks me through the world and is what I'm creating intuitively in the world with. And very often those of us that can have a gift in the other realms, the other dimensions, intuitive senses, either because we were already located there um, or perhaps because of the pain, the suffering, the tough stuff in the world, it's easy for any of us to want to escape the body, basically escape, escape the 3D world. Until we get that relationship a bit more locked in, it can be quite hard to ground our intuitive and visionary sight. This vision that we have of us perhaps being a community leader, you know, oh God, I really, I really want to help my community. I really want to be the person to, to kind of bring more, more help around mental health mental health awareness. I could do that in my local community, but, oh, I'm a bit scared. I'm a bit, will I be safe? How will I be judged? You know, that's the body talking. The intuition and the vision sees where your soul would like to go. And the body goes, oh, but all those times in the playground that people kind of judged me. And then, you know, my dad always said that I wasn't a great speaker or, you know, wherever these things come from, the intuition gives us the invitation to heal to heal through whatever part of us is small or is stuck. So it really is a healing experience to work with your intuition and it's always leading you forward. But that's why I say, is the body and your 3D world ready? The reason I say, is your 3D world ready? It's twofold. You might be trying to force something into the world of your friends, your colleagues, your business that it is not ready for or that it is not aligned with. So if you determinedly force this on other people and you notice they're upset, they're triggered, they're having bad reactions, that is not quite the right way to go about it or it's not quite the right time. So the vision might be true for you, but it might not be ready for your colleagues. It might not be time for your family. I remember my beloved mom and dad um, trying to like drag them to self-development workshops in my early 20s when I had discovered them, you know, and I'm sure many of you relate to that. It's like, you've got to come to this thing and it wasn't right for them. So I tried a few times and they were clearly broadcasting, no, 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 no. And I'm glad they didn't because it wouldn't have been the right time, the right thing for them. But they have had some exposure to that through other aspects of their own life. And equally through the work that I and Stephen do now and other people they know and just the rise of that stuff 20 years later. So the reason I bring this up about the, the rest of the world is twofold. You might be trying to force your vision on a world that isn't ready. And equally, that, that's the same for books and projects. If you're beating yourself up that you haven't finished writing your book, the world might not be ready. This might not be the time. They might need it in 2023. So don't make it all so personal. It's about us, but it's also when we're trying to bring something to the world, 
something that involves other people's participation, cooperation, connection, it's always bigger than us. So the timing and the timelines are something that we might need to keep checking in on. But remember my scale, fear or terror. If I'm terrified of something, I don't have to pay attention to that intuition. I might just file it away and see if it comes back around. But if it's just fear, if it's just discomfort, I'll take tiny steps towards it. Or I'll set myself a goal. I'll go, okay, well, maybe in three months I'll revisit this and I'll see how I feel. And often by then, because that vision has landed in my body and moved through me enough, I'm ready for the next, the next piece. So I'm going to share with you one of my favorite things now to do intuitively. And I, it's, I call it the body test. So it's really simple. And I think so often with psychic or intuitive um, capabilities, we're thinking of, you know, the intuitive mind, the psychic mind, everything outside the body. But there's a reason they say, trust your gut. The body is this incredibly sensory and intuitive being. You know, when you watch somebody, um, let's say you watch a video of somebody and your body knows, oh, there's something about this person I'm really drawn to. I come alive when I see them. Your body is intuitively resonating with that person. It's not really the words they're saying. It's there is an energy connection that your body knows. The body is telling you, oh, I'm attracted to this. There is something here that is good for me, that is working for me, that is teaching me. It may change in a week but the body is resonating. Equally, your body knows when it pulls away from somebody, when it has a lack of resonance. And sure, that might be a moment for you to heal. It might be this person has triggered you, but more often than not, you're just not in resonance with that person. And we get those feelings very instinctively. That's how intuition is operating for us all the time. So the body test is a way that you can get really good at that. So here's how we do it. Think of two options in your life. Now this, let's, let's choose a really simple example so that you can apply this. Um, if any of you either, you might be about to eat after this broadcast, or if you're going to sleep after this broadcast, think of your breakfast in the morning, what you might eat or drink. So I'm going to use really simple example. I'm going to think of having a banana or having a smoothie. Okay. So sit with each option in turn for 30 to 60 seconds. And then notice how each one felt to you. Which option felt better, calmer, more open? So I'm going to do the banana and I'm going to do it for like 10, 15 seconds. Because when you do this quick, you know, the more you do this, five, 10 seconds is usually enough. Banana. Smoothie. Hmm. So for me, my body came more alive with the smoothie. And for some of you, you might be like, I don't really feel any difference because we picked quite a subtle one. Let me give you a really good way to calibrate yourself. Think of somebody who you love being around. You know, you can be around them for hours or if you're a serious introvert, you can be around them for like 20 minutes and not want to run. And then think of somebody that you really do not want to have to spend three hours in the company of. Think of how your body reacts to these two people. Think first of the person you want to be with. Notice how your body feels. And now think of the person that you do not want to be in a room with and notice how your body feels. This is your body showing you its intuitive resonance scale. So this is a way that you can practice, but you can do this for anything. You know, I will check in with my body on a lot. Um, Even things like this course, Elevate, you know, this was something that we had planned for a little later in the year, but when everything kind of went crazy in the world, we realized that what we had scheduled for now wasn't really quite right anymore. So through a process of talking to the team, Elevate was what was born And I was checking in, oh no, that feels right. That feels good. It's different to what we all thought. It's different to what the mind was. It's different to what the plan was, but that actually feels the most open and expanded. And that feels the right thing to do. So you can use the body test all the time. And I highly recommend using it like as a game. 
especially if you're new to this, because you'll start to get good at it. And then when someone says, hey, do you want to come to my party on Thursday? And your mind goes, oh, I don't go to parties. I don't like parties. But you challenge your mind and your pattern and your habit. And you go, well, let me just do the body test on it, even though I want to say no. And you do the body test, stay at home, watch Netflix. Mm, that feels like that. Go to the party. Oh, well, that made my body feel a bit more alive. Damn, that's really inconvenient. Now I'm going to have to go. The good news is if you go to a party, you can always leave within 10, 15 minutes if you don't like it. But clearly your body, your intuition is asking you to take the road less traveled. So that's one test that you can run and practice. The next thing I wanted to talk to you about is channeling. And for any of you who have pen and paper handy, or if you're able to type on the screen, I'd like you to just take care of that because in a minute we're going to do something together. But channeling to me, I'll be completely honest. You know, I started channeling, um, I was 22 or 23. I always, I can never quite tell when it happened, but it was around that age. And so 20 years ago, um, I was not impressed by channeling. I was not interested in channeling. Um, I thought it was a little strange, but I wasn't against it, but it wasn't, you know, I didn't run to it. I wasn't, I didn't think it was great. I, I, I thought tarot readers were really cool. I did not think channelers were necessarily cool. Um, so it wasn't something I was looking for, but it's something that happened to me. And the reason I love to tell people where it happened to me is because it, it, that was a bit of a game changer for me. So I began channeling. I first heard the voice of my guides in one of the most spiritual places on earth. Yes, you are looking at it right now. The London Underground, the Tube a fountain of people connecting and loving each other and giving each other eye contact. Oh, no, 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 not at all. They, uh, you know, I was somewhere on the Northern Line, for those of you who know, uh, somewhere between Farringdon and um, Waterloo. And uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was an interesting moment for me when I first heard the voice of my guides. And so what I invite people to do because I've channeled for 20 years, is not necessarily to get fixated on, um, Noah, you can let go of the slide now, thank you. Um, not necessarily to get fixated on trying to channel your guides, because I think that can get us all a little bit twisted. You know, it's like, oh, well, I don't know if I'm hearing a guide, am I hearing an angel? Here's the thing, we all have a soul, we all have a higher self. And what I've learned over the years in workshop rooms all over the world, done this with hundreds and hundreds of people at a time, all of us, if we just take a moment to turn our attention upward and outward to our soul, to our higher self, we can channel. And all it takes is a little bit of focus and about two minutes. And it's a huge tool for developing your intuition, for beginning to invite that higher voice into your life, invite that higher feeling into your life. And like anything, the more regularly you do it, the more it becomes part of your normal. You do not have to become a channeler or a mystic and suddenly, you know, only wear flowing robes, tell all your friends that they can now only refer to you as the one and that you no longer can do anything 3D. It doesn't have to be like that. Now, it might be, that might be where you go. But for most of us, our intuition and our ability to tap into our soul will be so helpful if we can bring it to this everyday 3D reality, that's going to be what helps shift the planet and our experience of our 3D life. So I want you to get your pen and paper or get your sheet of paper on your screen if you're going to type this out. And just for about 90 seconds, you're going to write a message for yourself from your soul. And the way to do this is simply to ask the question, what does my soul want to tell me today? You may have specific questions for your soul. You may have specific questions that you want to ask, but if in doubt, or if you don't have a question, just the very practice of saying, what does my soul want to tell me today? And being open to writing down what you hear. A little bit like a telephonist. You're, you're basically taking dictation. It's how I did the first few years of my channeling. I would ask questions and then I would write the answer. And then 
after you've finished writing, you can read it back. But while you're writing, try and just stay in the writing zone. Try not to reflect on it too much because then you can lose your thread and you can go into the analytical mind. So for about 90 seconds, I invite you to write down the answer to this question. What does my soul want to tell me today? We'll take about 30 more seconds. If you've already finished writing, this would be a great time to look back at what you've written. See how it lands for you. So I think I've, I've shared this on stage in my intuitive power workshop. And also I have an audio course called how to channel and why. And um, so I've, you've probably, some of you will have heard this story, but um, I had this great experience many, many years ago with a woman when I was still doing one-on-one -on -one sessions. And uh, she, was, she was great. She was a real character. I, I always really enjoyed working with her. And she came to me fairly regularly. And she wanted to develop her channeling as one of her things. And so she, uh, I gave her the exercise of, you know, asking some questions, writing some answers, and asked her to do it every two days for the two week gap that we had between our sessions and kind of gave her a time. You know, I said, just, just five, 10 minutes a day. That's all told her what to look out for and, you know, to kind of check she was okay to do it every two days, all that stuff. So she comes back and, uh, you know, when, when I said, Oh, how, how did it go? And she, she was brilliant. She went, oh, well, it wasn't great. And I was like, Oh, okay. Did, did you have trouble bringing the words through or, she was like, well, I, know, I, got, I mean, I always got words, but just wasn't, you know, the, they just weren't great words. So I'm thinking, oh, wow, you know, you know, is she getting like bad information or because the thing is, when it's your higher self or your soul, it won't be it won't be negative. It won't be judgmental. Um, and she said, well, you know, it was just those things like, you know, Joan, you're lovely. You're a light here on the planet. You're here to do great things. You know, she was just, you know, it was all just really, and I was like, okay. And because I knew her a little bit at the time, I said, how often do you speak to yourself like that, Joan? And her self-judgment was one of the things we'd been working on in the sessions we were doing and, and this repetitive self-judgment she had. She paused for a minute and she went, well, not very often. And I channeled for her in that session. And what the Z's explained to her is something I've since shared with others, which is they said, when you begin channeling, you calibrate to the frequency of love. And if you are not used to being in or regularly connecting to that frequency of love, it will take a little while for the information to get more detailed, more specific, because at first you have to calibrate to the vibration of love 
So I think this is why often in, in workshop rooms across the world, when I've done this exercise, for some people, not for everybody, but for some people, this can be very emotional. You know, you see these words that you've written down for yourself and they're loving words to you. And I think it's easy to dismiss loving words as, well, surely I'm making it up. And it's like, well, if you don't normally talk to yourself like that, then you're tapping into another plane of who you are, another aspect of you as a soul. And that's a place you want to keep visiting because it will change you. It will change the frequency of you. And also, you know, sure, you can start writing questions in a few weeks, like when will my sister get over herself? You know, and then, you know, they'll, they'll tell you things. They'll say, well, first of all, you know, the reason you experience her the way you do is because of this, this and this. Um, so it's not that you always have to use the question, what does my soul want to tell me today? You know, you can ask anything, but it's a great primer. It's a great way to open the tap and to start to let that energy come through. And the more you do it, the more it will change you. It will change the way you see the world. It will change how much you include that energy in your life. And the reason we write it down, and this is so important, any of us who are intuitive, who are visionary, we can have you know, those visionary intuitive thoughts all the time. But I don't know about you, I forget them. And the gift for me of writing the channeled answers down was I could go back and look at what had happened two or three weeks before. And I could track in my life, ah, this is showing up. Oh, I see how this came true. So I started to trust my intuition more, not through blind faith, but through experimentation because I could see the results. Three weeks ago, my guides or my soul, however you want to see it, had said something to me that then played out in my coming weeks. So I started to have more of a sense and more of a trust and more of a soul-based way of life because I was having that conversation. So it has a huge change effect. And it's great to go back and refer back to several weeks ago, several months ago, and to see how it plays out. It helps you refine and hone your intuition. Okay, so we're coming to the close of the slides I have for you. I'd like to do a short channel and take some of your questions, but I just want to give you a quick recap of, you know, we've, we've had to move fast through this module, um, but here's just a couple of things to bear in mind when you are owning your intuition, what will show up for you. So our intuition develops through creativity, so we have to create new circumstances, new actions in our life to help our intuition show up in our life. But equally, creative acts are so important. So if you like writing poems, if you like drawing, if you like cooking, if you like gardening, you know, cooking without a recipe book, all these things that where we bring new energy through the body and we're tapping into our felt senses, our intuitive senses and creating, creativity is highly intuitive act. And if you practice it regularly, it will really show up for you. Our intuition also develops through our intention. So I have an intuition I might enjoy being a Broadway singer. Well, then I'd better hold that as an intention and take some action on it. It also develops through breaking habits. Oh, I guess I'd better stop telling myself I'm tone deaf if I want to be a Broadway singer because those two things aren't going to coexist very well. It also develops through practice and focus. So practicing the body test practicing with tools, some of the divination that we've talked about. It also develops with logical observation. So paying attention to how your intuition works in your life and what happens. Intuition is not these things. Fear, the inner critic, growing pains, or the opinion of others. But they may all show up once you act on intuition. So for example, if my intuition tells me that I have to go home and tell my brother, hey brother, I've had this great idea. I'm going to become an Olympic water skier. My brother's opinion is probably going to be, uh, Lee, are you sure? Because you kind of look like what you're doing is fine and I've seen you on water skis and you're appalling. You know, I'm going to run into his opinion, at which point I can either be logical about it and go, oh yeah, Maybe that's a vision I don't need to follow. Or maybe I'll remember what he said in case it's a disastrous path. Or I might have to completely disregard his fear or his opinion and follow my own path. So intuition is, is very active. You have to constantly be really checking and assessing and kind of following the thread of things. 
So here's a couple of things you can do to kind of help you with some of the development that we're talking about here. So you can channel daily for yourself. Daily might be too much, but even if you just two or three times a week sat down and wrote, what does my soul want to tell me today? Takes two or three minutes. Schedule it on your calendar. If you're scared, you'll forget. You can keep a journal of how your intuition plays out. If you want to really study, oh yeah, the other day I had this feeling, this burning sensation to tell my husband or my friend this thing that I wasn't sure I should tell them. And actually it went much better than I thought. You might want to write that incident down. It will help you refer back to knowing, oh, okay, I used to silence myself, but now I'm learning that if I gently let myself not silence myself, it's going a lot better than it used to, perhaps because I've learned more tact. I have learned to say things in a kind of way, or the world has changed and people are a bit more ready to be emotional. So I, I'm going to have to adjust. I'm going to have to, okay, I'm going to have to change my habit now. And I can speak my truth a bit more, so long as I'm being mindful and paying attention to how people react. How alive can you allow your body and your spirit to be? The more you act on intuition, the more you look after your body, the more you do things that are helping support your body's physical wellness and your health to the best of your ability, the more your body's senses are going to come online, the more intuitive you're going to feel and be. So what could you give your body that might help your intuition? You know, for sure, um, I think that, you know, sometimes, you know, I had a real thing with eating disorder when I was younger. And I definitely think I was trying to dumb down my vibration. I was trying to take the edge off um, my intuition and the, the how much I was feeling. So I think there are many ways that we kind of compress our bodies or abandon our bodies. And when we can start to just notice that and lovingly direct ourselves slowly in a different direction, really big things can happen. Practice the body test regularly. Remember that creativity is intuitive and grounds the magic in your life. So where beliefs are blocking you, work on healing them and use divination tools where possible and practice on friends. You know, friends who are really open to you practicing your intuition on them with cards, with just your own channeling ability. That can be a really great way to start to get used to experiencing yourself that way. And you don't have to get it right for somebody. The truth is no intuitive is seeing the whole picture, just like no person is seeing the whole picture. But a good intuitive will be able to deliver intuitive and transformational information to a person that they can then use to enhance their life. You know, the worst kinds of intuitives are the ones who come and whack you over the head with information that you didn't ask for or didn't see coming. So it's really important to when you practice using your intuition with other people in a conscious way, that you're having an understanding of how it might be affecting them and that you hold an intent of, I want to really help this person with their healing path and their life path. And that's the intention I'm going to hold. And the rest is going to take care of itself. So the final slide we have for you tonight, Noah, if you could push that one up in every second, you are creating who you will be next. And I promise you that the more I've surrendered to my intuition in my life, and probably for me, the biggest fear was surrendering to my intuition in career. You know, there's no part of me that really wanted to stand there as a channeler or an intuitive. I didn't want to, honestly, I didn't want to have to deal with the bullshit in the world around that stuff. I didn't want to have to deal with the judgment. I didn't want to have to deal with the stigma. Um, and I've been doing it for 16 years now, and definitely the world has changed. But it also helped me let go of, it, it also taught me to not care what others thought, which like many of you, I'm sure was a thing for me. Um, and still can, I, you know, I can still have my moments with that. But what I was intuitively told to do was to do this as work and to share my gifts. And I was told that I would be okay. And that any challenges that standing for my intuition brought to me would be really replaced uh, or if you like, balanced by the connections I would have with people, the rich experiences I've got to have, and how it has expanded me as a person. So for me, surrendering to my intuition was not really so much about learning a skill. It has been about growing as a person and letting that be part of 
a leadership skill inside me and recognizing this invisible but very powerful soul-based force is asking me to listen to it, is asking me to be in relationship to it, is inviting me to become bigger. So um, I'm aware that the time is moving fast. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to do a, a, a short channel with disease. And for those of you in the Elevate course, I'm already aware that next week's class, which is Embrace Your Humanity, disease, I'm already hearing them in the last few days, that they have quite a lot to say about that one. But I would like to just do a short touch base with my guides, the Z's, who I have been hearing for 20 years and channeling for 16, and I keep my eyes closed when I channel. So there's not a lot to see. You may want to close your eyes uh, so you also have your own intuitive, felt experience around the words. Hmm. Good. Welcome, cosmic friends. Uh, this is a time unlike any other on earth uh, where your intuitive and felt senses are returning as a humanity. This does not mean everyone on the planet is going to feel that way or experience their intuition overnight. Not at all. But it does not take the whole to have an experience for an experience to grow in the collective. So, the rising number of people on the planet who are getting more in touch with their feelings more in touch with their intuition and more in touch with the wider truth of humanity at this time. That is enough of a wave of change to activate the souls, the hearts, and the cosmic minds of all of you on the planet. For a long time, your earth has been in a form of quarantine from the rest of the universe, a form of quarantine from its cosmic nature. The fact that you are part of a vast whole universally, and yet you as human earth beings have been so conditioned to only believe in the story of earth. Many of you do not feel that way. You feel you are part of the universe, and yet the narrative for you as human beings has been quite contained to the earthly realm by those who have asked you to follow the existing narrative. And yet here we are in this spectacular breaking apart of the old programs on earth. And we understand that spectacular is a word that many of you see as celebratory and many of you are deeply empathic to what is occurring on your planet at this time. Not just the suffering of those directly affected in all ways, not just health, but also economic and the restriction of freedom through what you are referring to as the coronavirus, but also your planet as a whole. She is asking for more balance. She is asking for more health and wellness. And you're at a critical time on the planet where all of that is concerned. The good news is over this coming three to four years, you are going to see more and more breaking down, not just in the systems of your world, but more importantly, in the old belief systems of your world. So for those of you who are dying for the earth to change, we would ask you to put your focus less on your desperation for the outside world to change and instead to focus on what needs to change in your inner world because you are part of the outer world changes and you do this by following your own divine soul plan, that which your intuition will constantly bring you back to. So what does your soul want to tell you today is a wonderful question to bring you into the presence of your soul on a daily basis. But where does my soul want me to go next? Is a wonderful question when you are ready to be shown how you can surrender into the next level of your greatness here on earth as a soul-based human on a planet where humanity is beginning to remember that it is one cosmic soul coming together to undo the restrictions that have been laid into the foundation of this planetary grid for a long, long time. And to allow yourselves to experience presence, consciousness, and the brightness of universal light that comes to so many of you when you are tapped into your intuition, your presence, your heart, the stillness of yourselves, but is now beginning to infiltrate your planet more and more from the sky. And many of you are aware of it, you feel it, 
It is activating the intuitive part of you, your third eye, your heart, your throat chakra. These are all coming online. So you will feel the truth, know the truth, and speak the truth. Some of you are more speaking based. Some of you are more feeling based. Some of you are more knowing based. But the vibration with which you carry truth into your world has a ripple effect on all. We will leave you with this. You are all intuitive all of the time when it comes to reading others and feeling how you feel about others. You are not listening to their words, paying too much attention to their outfits, even if they are wearing a fabulous outfit. No, you are reading and feeling what is in the ocean of their soul that they are using their human body to carry around the world. And when you connect with your intuition, it is direction for your soul's creation. It is you allowing yourself to bring a bigger reality, not just to your life, but to the lives of those around you and to the very dimension of earth itself. Earth is becoming very alive and you are here as stewards of that for yourself and for others. Good, in peace and in love to all. And remember, it is your time to own your intuition for no one else can own it for you. Hmm. 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 Ah, okay, so at this point, I would love to invite Noah onto the call. Hey, Noah. Hey, Lee, that was great. Loved it. Thank you. We've gone, we've gone quite a bit over linear time, haven't we? Um, yeah, that's okay, though. I think, uh, I don't think, you know, people don't have anywhere to be these days, so. Great, great. We'll, we'll, just, we'll just overrun. So, um, yeah, we'll overrun. So if any of you need to go, you can always catch the replay. Um, and for those of you who can stay a bit longer, it just feels right to take some questions. Yeah, so I just wanted to give a quick instructions real quick because we'll we're gonna rotate. Um, we'll go back and forth a little bit between questions that people had submitted in writing in advance, some people who couldn't be here, um, but also maybe we can start with some uh, live questions for folks that are here. So, um, what we would encourage you to do if you have a question that you want to ask Lee live um, via voice during the session, you'll see a raise hand button at the bottom of your screen. It looks like a hand. If you're on a tablet or a smartphone, you'll have to tap your screen once with your finger and then the, um, those I, that icon will come up. You can tap the raise hand button. That'll indicate to us that you have a question that you'd like to ask. Um, and we will call on people one at a time. Uh, I will call and say your name um, and then I'll unmute you so that you can speak and be heard by Lee and by everyone else. Um, when I unmute you, you will have a a little window will pop up on your screen that's um, asking you to confirm that you agree to be unmuted. So just you'll just want to click that box um, to say okay um, that you agree to be unmuted and then you can ask Lee your question. Um, after you're done asking your question and, and Lee is done answering, I'll put you back on mute so you don't have to worry about any background noise being picked up. And if you have a question, if you're the type that is a little that might get a little stage fright if you get called on, um, we recommend that you just write the question down in advance um, on some paper so that you can read it. We found that sometimes that can make it easier for you to get the real question that you want to ask out um, in case you get nervous when you all of a sudden hear your name and you're called on. So um, without uh, further ado, I think I'll, uh, I'll call on someone here. Um, there is a Katie F. I will... Uh, See if I can unmute you here. And Katie, let us know if uh, if you can hear us. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, if you could just speak up a little bit louder, please. Yeah, hi, hi, um, thank hi. you. Hi. <laughs> uh, so, thank you. And um, something I've hit up a lot on this past week uh, is a sense of wrongness and specifically relating to times even this past couple of weeks that I, I didn't listen to my intuition or I, I listened to it and then I went the other way. And um, 
in particular related to what I think a lot of people are dealing with right now is the unemployment. I, I was in a big show that, that got shut down and, um, and, and have had to claim unemployment and go through all that. But uh, I think that I'm possibly processing a lot of the pain that other people in even worse situations are going through. But um, I sort of channeled about this sense of wrongness to a, a small Facebook live group that I have. And the next day was hit with a terrible panic attack about that very subject and kind of plunged into the sense of wrongness. And it's something I think that I'm processing in pieces and pieces, but I, I wonder if you have any insight just on the notion of wrongness, which I know is a part of sure. humanity that needs to like die out along with this somehow. So yeah, I'm just wondering if you had thoughts on that. Sure. Yeah. Firstly, I'm really sorry to hear that about your show and the unemployment, even though I, I trust it will, it will move itself for you. I feel that quite strongly for you too, but I, um, it's, it's a really interesting point that you bring up because one of the things that I'm, I was very aware of, and my God, in all the workshops I, I, I did, especially you know the workshops I was doing between 2006, 2012, one of the things I realized that we have around intuition is this fear of being wrong, uh, this fear of misleading people. This, uh, and it, it really goes back to, you know, you think of the witch burnings, I used to do this thing in the workshop room where I would say, how many of you here remember or have some past life memory or feel like you remember being burned as a witch or um, ostracized for what you went through? And my God, the amount of hands that would go up. So I always think there's two ways of looking at that. Maybe we did have a direct memory of that and it was our past life, or we can feel that in the collective ancestral memory. And so that's there. And so as we, as we engage with it, it, it panics us. So I think one of the things that can really help with that is with wrongness, there's two ways of looking at it. Cause you talked, you've kind of said that, you know, part of you is like, Oh, was I wrong about, were you, were you, were you specifying that were you wrong about something you'd said to people or something that you had felt that you hadn't acted on yeah that that i that i'd gotten a very strong sense of intuition about something quite simple and got swept up in sort of panic and chaos of the last few weeks and and overrode that yeah. and then realized it was the wrong inverted commas thing you know and i like what you said about life does reroute it does somehow course correct um but i i mean i went into such a Oh, irrational sense of despair from something relatively quite small that I thought, what is this? And it was very specifically, I felt like I'd done the wrong thing and I felt s almost suicidal because of it, because, and I knew it was irrational. So I was like, what, what is the intensity of this? And I had just been talking about how this, this idea that we are innately wrong has to somehow dis disappear. So I, I guess it's sort of, it's, it's interesting you say this because there's two things that hit me and I, I think this is going to take, my sense of this for you is like 12 to 24 months from now, you are elevating your power like in a really big way. And I feel like that's going to be more obvious in your life 12 to 24 years, for 12 to 24 months from now. But that, but that right now you're in that, you're in that real uh, kind of difficult period where you're pushing up against all the parts of you that, that kind of don't believe, that have compressed beliefs, that have, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy. That kind of stuff is, is showing up for you. But I also just want to say, you know, with what, what's going on on the planet right now, it's just, it's, it's intense and it's a wave. You know, I'm speaking to various people who are in very varied situations. And even the people that I'm speaking to who haven't got like a direct challenge they're really going through it because it's in the collective. So heightened emotions, heightened stresses. I can hear your little one in the background. So you've, you know, you've clearly got other responsibilities that you're dealing with as well, which I think is the story for most right now. Um, I wouldn't be too surprised that your emotions are up. But I think going back to that wrong thing, two things. It's always a fear about we could get something wrong when we're sharing intuitive information with other people. And so it's always good to qualify it with, this is what I feel, this is what I get, but also in the way that you share your intuition, share your beliefs about intuition and 
share the openness. But what you're specifically talking about, it's like I said earlier on in tonight's broadcast, for me, we train ourselves that way. You know, I had something just three weeks ago where I was like, oh, I shouldn't have said yes to that because now I'm about to do it. I can feel it's not quite the right thing for me, but it was okay. I did it. I learned the lesson and I know that next time my body feels that again, I'm going to remember because I paid attention to that thing and I studied it in my mind and my awareness, I'm, I'm, I'm calibrating a new level of intuition because the thing is we don't master our intuition in one area and then stop. We master our intuition in one area. It improves an area of our life as a result. And then we turn to the left and it's like, now I'm going to learn how to really speak my truth. I've learned how to take more, uh, own more of my power in my work. Now I'm going to learn how to speak my truth in my personal life. So for you, uh, this is really up right now. Like that, uh, that, that I can't speak my truth. Can I speak my truth? If I, what do I do? What, why didn't I? And it's, it's okay. So give yourself a break and try and just recognize these are crazily extraordinary times that require real self-care, patience, love towards ourselves, and just maybe keep a journal of these intuitions so that you can start to track them and, and see these things. I hope that helps. And I send you a big etheric hug. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to uh, go to Laura T. See if we can get her to join us. Laura, are you there? Hi, yes, I'm here. Hi, Laura. Hi, Lee. Um, I, what I wrote down to ask you about is um, we seem to be being asked to hold such a wide range of emotion and vibration and just what you have to offer as far as being able to be compassionate and have empathy for the people who are ill and the very real mortality that we're faced with. And then at the other end of the spectrum, um, all this creativity and innovation. Um, I've had a couple of conversations recently with people in group about permission to be creative and per giving yourself permission, but it just, I don't know, I could, I could use more and maybe other people can too. No, I, I love the way you express it because it's true. It is such a wide range at the moment. It's, um, it, yeah, just real extremes between fear and love in a way that I've never experienced on the planet. And I think that's true for many people right now. So uh, first of all, I'll share how I'm coping with it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm noticing when my stress levels reach capacity. So for example, there are various people in my life who are, who are in the place you describe. Um, and what I'm learn, I feel like I'm having to just learn to dance with it differently. I've always, in the last few years, one of the ways that I've managed to stay balanced myself is to rec recognize when I'm getting overloaded. So it's like, okay, that's enough of that. You can no longer hold compassion over here for for this group of people, you now need to walk away for 20 minutes or two hours. You need to get your energy back to center and kind of get your energy back and full and then walk back again. Now, I know that's tricky, like with parenting and things like that, because you don't necessarily have the luxury of being able to walk away for an hour physically. But I think that's where change of focus comes in. I think especially if you're the leader, if you're a parent, you know, it's like if the kids are getting cranky, you know, one of the things that you tend to have to do as a parent is lead them to a different vibration. And I think, you know, whether it's play or whether it's um, something calming, you have to be the one to direct the energy if everyone's getting a bit fried. And I think we have to do the same with ourselves. So I think the, the death energy that we're experiencing is so the other end of the life creativity spectrum. You know, if you think of someone is born and someone dies and there is a lot of death energy on the planet right now, and I'm not referring to the physical deaths, even though they're part of it. Um, I'm referring to the amount of extreme changes that people are feeling and that, are, that we're feeling is, is in the air, not just now, but like in the future, because this is going to change everything. So 
I think it's a balance. I think it's knowing when it's time, when you have the energy to be able to be compassionate, to give, to serve, and then noticing when you're doing something that's coming through you that might ultimately serve others, either because you reset yourself or because the very thing you're creating is going to serve. But for me, it's like a dance between the introvert and the extrovert. It's like, Now I haven't got the energy to give anymore. So if I fill myself back up again, at some point I will have, and then I'll go back that way. So that's how I've been experiencing it. And that's probably the best advice I could give. And I hope that helps. Very much. Thank you for your question. And good luck with all you're doing and all the creativity and the innovation. We need it. We really need that good positive energy as much as we need to be able to deal with the truth of what's going on too. So thank you. Hey, I'm going to go to uh, someone named Cameron, Cameron M. Let's see if we can get Cameron. Hang on just a second. Okay, let's see. Cameron, can you hear us? I can. Hi there. Hi, Cameron. Hi. Um, I had a question about, you know, something you said in the, the free recording that you offered before this um, course started was that this was the time of the great reveal, which I, right? Is that right? Was, um, it, was it the activation of planetary awakening or was it the energy update? Oh goodness. Uh, it wasn't the energy update. It was the long, it was a one hour recording. The one hour, so that's the, yeah, the planetary awakening recording that kicks off elevate. Yes. Or it's in right. the, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Something about this time being about revealing structures yeah. that have been hidden by, from us. Right. I find that very interesting. I do find myself getting sucked into, um, there's a lot of theories circulating about the cabal and the Illuminati and the deep state and how it's falling, which I find so interesting and I want to know more. And yet I also find it lowers my, it really stresses me out. (laughs) So I just kind of, I want to know, but then if it's true, I just want to be able to put it down and be like, I don't need to pay attention to that now. I mean, do you have insight into what's going on? Yeah, you know, I did a lot of research into all of that stuff um, between the years of 2008 and 2012. I, you know, I and, and and exactly as you said, I think the tricky thing with that is um, the information that's there can be laced in its own gen- agenda, can be laced in certain elements of disinformation, and can be laced in fear too. I think when you first come to look at some of that stuff, if you just believe all of it as true especially the idea that it is going to happen, it becomes very disempowering. And it's interesting what the Zs have said. Over the years, they've said different, different things about the existing agendas. They've always said that the agendas can't hold, that where, we, where we're going in consciousness, they're not able to hold, but that they will try. And they said that this was the period where they, you know, that they would push harder to try. Um, and that you know, the question is, how willing are we to how willing are we to have all that dismantle and how quickly and they said that what we're experiencing right now is a much brighter timeline than it could have been so it could have been a lot worse already one thing they do talk about is they say be careful about how your fear can be co-opted to make those agendas come true because they said that the people who have created those agendas um they're, you know, they're very aware that when you have people who are open to vision, people who are open to their energy senses, the very ones that they would encourage the collective to, to pull back from and forget exist, they will help create things if you show them enough pictures of what's going to happen and you keep getting them hooked on focusing on it, they will start to see that in the field and that will help create it in the field. So That's one thing that I have been very aware of and very mindful of in my own observations, investigations, and reactions to it. Um, But the other piece that they've also talked about, and I think this came up a little bit in that recording, is they've said that you're going to see a whole lot of, um, when you look at that agenda stuff, it doesn't tend to give solutions And it doesn't tend to say the other alternative would be this. So they say that the story is told as if if nothing else in the universe is going to interfere with it, stop it or change it. And they say, and that's that's why you're seeing such a mixed bag right now. You're seeing a heavier agenda and a darker agenda trying to take hold 
but you're also, there is a certain level of chaos being run into those agendas, not just by those people who we may never see or know who are working behind the scenes against them, but also what's going on universally with this rise of the human spirit. So um, I'm somebody who likes to look at both sides of the picture. I'm not just somebody who, who doesn't look at that stuff. I do look at it. And I think it's, for me, it's been important to have some sense of, of that stuff. But I also am very aware that the most important thing we can do is, is what we create going forward. And sometimes as well, for me, that involves with some of the people in my life, um, just inviting them to see beyond the narrative um, gently and occasionally, you know, if they're telling me about a news headline as if it's fact, I will invite them to see why that might not be fact and what might be going on beyond without going into big detail. So I think you can be an ambassador of the truth while also being an ambassador of the light and a higher a higher probability. I don't think it has to be one or the other. As I hear some people say, they think it has to be. They're like, well, you can't be positive about it if this is going on. And it's like, well, no, you're talking about a probability. And we're all here to help steer the probability in a different way. So it's a, such a big topic, but I hope that what I just shared encapsulates some of my view and in some way can help you with yours. That's very helpful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, can I ask you one thing about the news? How trustful are you of the current headlines of, of everything? And how, how much do you 20 percent. 20%, 20%. That's pretty low. Yeah, it's pretty low. But it doesn't mean that I completely, uh, you know what I like to do? And this is where your intuition, this is where developing your intuition is good. I feel like I can feel the truth in stories now. Um, right. And you can see when the story is manipulating you. You can see when the language has been copywritten to steer you into thinking a certain thing. So right. it can sometimes be interesting to look at the news to assess what the media are doing. Um, and I also want to say that there are some great news sources out there, not so much that I find those in the mainstream media, but there are some really good independents um, as well, that you can find the ones that you resonate with, um, people who really are reporting what's going on rather than um, following a kind of pre-written narrative, if you know what I mean. Thank you so much. Thank you. I Lee, I think it'd be a good time to take a question that was submitted in writing for someone who couldn't Perfect. hear. Yeah. Perfect. So I'll, I'll go ahead and read this to you. Um, it says, in these times of shelter in place, I understand that it's a pause or reset and going inward is the right thing to do. However, I've always been inward focused and I feel that now is my time to show up. Is it a good idea to begin planning or even taking action? There's so much unknown that I'm hesitant to do anything. Here's what I love about your question. It's a real chance to apply some of what we were talking about. So, you will know the answer to that question when you try it and experiment with it. So start planning things and see how it feels, not because you have to follow through with those plans, but because you're experimenting with this not knowing that you've got right now. You're like, well, is this a good time? The way we figure that out is we, we take action and we try something and we see what happens. You might start planning today and feel good from it. And then tomorrow, come back to those plans and update them a little bit or change them. Or you might start planning and just, it feels wrong. It doesn't feel necessary. And then you have your answer. So I think all of it's true. I think, you know, often the answer for our, is, is in our question. I think we are in a time of inward reflection to some degree, but I also think that the people are in very different places. Some people we're ready to kind of jump out anyway. And so this inward reflection time is just giving them time to like, you know, kind of prime, prime what they're doing even more. Other people have been shocked into this time and they're now in the kind of moment where all of the pieces are up in the air and they're looking at them and they're going, oh, where's all this gonna land? And they're not going to create with it yet. That might come in months. So for you, because you were, you were kind of ready to start doing things, there's no reason to not try with experimenting with planning or building and just seeing how it goes. So this is a great moment for you to experiment and see what happens. And 
follow your intuition as you go. And the most important thing is to notice how it makes you feel. If it makes you feel good, great, keep doing it because you feeling good shifts your vibration into the state that more of us want to live in more of the time. And from that place, we're very intuitive and very naturally creative and magnetic. So hope that helps and good luck. Thanks, Lee. I'm conscious of the time. It's 9.33 Eastern. So we've, um, just want to know, do you want to take another question? Can we take one last question? Yeah. And uh, maybe we'll take one live. So okay. there's uh, Christina C. Let's see if we can get her. Christina, are you there? I am. Can you hear me? Hi, Christina. Hi, Lee. I'm so glad I was called on. It's so good to see you. And I, I just want to express so much gratitude first because I've been watching your videos and watching you for several years now. And you hugely impact the coaching that I do with other people. And you. so you reach, you reach even beyond your current community because I'm always using your work. Oh, awesome. Thank you. I'm very grateful to do this. So thank you. Oh, thank you for doing this. Um, so a lot of the things I was wondering about, you kind of answered with other people. And I love the whole collective energy that comes into this because it's, I really feel myself in everyone that spoke. And I would say my biggest thing that I have happening right now is that I felt like I was prepared for this time. And I feel so ready and I feel so much like a warrior and a goddess of the light and just ready to walk people into their greatness. And I really love standing in that. Mm -hmm. And I've had so many amazing conversations the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And then I've had this striking contrast of just very real world where I'm I, I put in 3,000 calls to unemployment to, because my day job furloughed me. And so while I have this greatness that's happening, there's this other part that's also happening. And I have very real human goals. And I have a lot of credit card debt to pay off from living in a very expensive area in California and moving out of there. Yeah. And, um, and so my partner and I are kind of digging out of that space financially and we were finally making really good money and then the world went sideways we went ah crap. and there was anger at first and we kind of worked through that and and we've been mostly good but my my question is kind of, it's not really developed but it's around um we think differently in our fear responses so for me I really step into power and I really step into leadership and I get really invigorated with helping others through it. And so I am fed by that and I'm really empowered and I love empowering others. My partner does not like it when the linear process stops. <laughs> and if we're not on track for our goals or for the things that are supposed to happen, he gets really stressed. And it's things like, oh, I can't wait till you go back to work and we can get back on, on point with our goals. And all these things and I'm going what are you talking about I, I'm like the longer it goes the more disconnected I feel yeah from that world so a couple things and this is great so the first thing that I was hearing when you first started talking was I was hearing the power of grief the power of grief it's like grief is is a superpower in your life right now not so much your partner your partner is is perhaps more in reaction to grief which is also you know grief but for you um the power of grief as an energy that's moving through you that you're in resonance with in the collective this is kind of where you're up leveling your work so you know it's funny i always think when you're a coach or a healer or and intuitive for other people. You know, we're usually never better than the moment when we're like cracking open too, you know? It's like, <laughs> and, and, and it's not that you're not good when that isn't happening, but I feel like those are the moments that we get to up-level our empathy, our compassion, uh, you know, our feelings come online. My, 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 my friend Nikki says, it kind of puts an, a new emotional signature into your work. So I think for you, you're having a relationship with the power of grief both in, your, in yourself and in what you're experiencing in the outside world. 
that is kind of fueling you and you know your extrovert is having a good time with that his extrovert is pissed with that like his <laughs> you know he's kind of he wants to go the other way so this is good this is good information this is a really important powerful moment in your partnership where you need to be careful how enmeshed you get with him and his process and being able to separate consciously where the two of you can have a, a, a verbally stated at this moment in the day, I'm going to go over here and you're going to go over there because I really respect where you are, but I, I can't go there right now. I'm here and I need to be here. And equally for him to respect that for you, because for you two is, this is a really key moment in your partnership where it's like, okay, things were good. Things were growing. And now here's this growth moment where you've both got this question mark over, well, will we get back on track? Well, sure. If you, if you had things working before energetically, sure. Within the new circumstance that we're all in, in the world, which is a little bit unknown to everybody, um, you're going to be able to generate again in this new world in the way that you've got the generation going. But this is a key moment in your partnership where is there room in your partnership for the two of you to be having very separate experiences for several moments or hours per day and to have the mutual respect for one another and the agreement with one another that both parties feel the other one is honoring, that you can't overlap in this and that that's actually the growth. It's not that you have to like heal more or process each other more. No, it's that you're having very different experiences that both of you clearly need to have. And the dissonance, the friction is going to come if you try and come together. And instead, if you agree in this, in this instance, if you agree to have a healthy boundary that's well communicated, that's honored by both people, that's actually going to be, I think, the thing that will free you both. That was what came to me when I, in response to your question. Oh, and it's so, it's so right on Lee. Cause when you, as you're saying it, I feel like a, a rocket that could shoot off into the sky. <laughs> like that's, it's, I'm very alive in my body. And, um, and it's so funny because that's exactly what's happening right now is, you know, he's watching his thing and I'm here in a separate room watching you and having this experience. And, oh. um, yeah, and we're totally okay with that. And we've been able to come to that space. So I really appreciate that. I got it. And, um, and I'm super clear what's Thank next. Thank you for the question. Cause I'm, sh I'm sure, I'm sure you're not, <laughs> I'm sure there are other people watching that going, Oh, that sounds familiar. So thank you. And thanks for being here tonight. Thank you. Big love. Awesome. Big love. Okay. Well, Noah, thank you so much for hosting tonight and for fielding all our questions. Yeah, you were great. That was, that was really fantastic. Lee. Thanks so much. Well, thank you everyone too. For, for We had so many great questions, but there just wasn't enough time to get through all of them. But thank you for putting them to us, all the questions that you sent in. And thank you to those of you who, who were here and present. To all of you who are in the Elevate course, it's fantastic to be underway with you. Next week, we have Embracing Your Humanity. Um, and for those of you who were just here tonight, um, who just wanted to experience the free class, own your intuition, I really hope that this gives you a chance to look at your intuition differently. It's a power in your life and it's a force and you can figure it out and only you can figure it out with help and tools and teachings, sure, but it's really about you owning it and experimenting with it because it's going to be needed in you and for you in your life more than ever before in the years to come and it's going to be re-owning that power for yourself that's going to really be a game changer. So if you're curious about the rest of the Elevate program, you can check out elevate2020.world. The replay of this broadcast will be available tomorrow, but if you're joining the Elevate program, you will have access immediately to the Activation of Planetary Awakening 2020 to 2030, which is a one hour channel from My Guides Disease with music from Devor Bozik and with a song that we created at the end to integrate the message. And that will be there as, as soon as you join the Elevate program. And we have a few other things that will be coming out each week between the Thursday live broadcasts. But for now, big love to all of you from me and my team and look after yourselves well out there. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.